This latest coronavirus wave is putting more pressure on an already drained health care system. It's also causing an unprecedented mental health crisis. Studies show doctors and nurses are nearly twice as likely to die by suicide as people in other professions. New landmark legislation has been passed in hopes of changing that. The bill is designed to help address the mental health needs of health care workers. Corey Feist is here to discuss that. He is the president and co-founder of the Dr. Lorna Breen Heroes Foundation. That's a nonprofit that lobbied for the new legislation. Thanks for being here. So the pandemic has obviously highlighted the struggles that health care workers are having. What are they going through right now in this current surge? Before the pandemic, our healthcare workforce was already starting to see elevated rates of burnout, depression, as you noted, twice the suicide rate of the normal public. Now what they're experiencing, now we have 55% of the healthcare workforce, which is burned out. 60% have said that the pandemic has harmed their mental health, um, heightened levels of exhaustion by nurses, as, as you showed in that prior piece. And only a third of them feel like their employers care about their mental health. So what we have right now is we have a tsunami of mental health trouble for our entire healthcare workforce, which started this pandemic in a highly burned out state. Um, and then most of those people, or I should say at least half of those individuals, don't feel like they can get the mental health treatment that they deserve or need because of fear for, of professional repercussions, either on their license or culturally in their institutions. We've got this huge sector of our workforce, which we've now sent off to war, and we have got to support their mental health as they, as they continue this fight for us. What are your biggest fears as we find ourselves in this avalanche of, of uh, new cases, new hospitalizations, and apathy in the public? Well, as you just say, the apathy in the public is huge. And in your prior segment, you showed uh, the, this workforce walkout. I mean, my biggest concern, frankly, is that we won't have a healthcare workforce intact to take care of uh, COVID patients as well as any other patient. You know, recently I heard from a health system that had 50% turnover in its nursing in the emergency department, and they were shifting workers and nurses out, just like in your prior piece, out of um, non-emergency um, room shifts to emergency room shifts. And that, that has a, a, a catalyst effect or a catalytic effect, um, which really will impact the way that we deliver care to, to all those in need. So folks need to understand this is not just about taking care of COVID patients. This is taking care of all of us. Oh. So tell us why do so few healthcare workers actually seek help? Because that is part of the struggle uh, that, that your organization is trying to help overcome. Absolutely. And you've really got two main things here. You've got a cultural issue and a regulatory issue. Culturally, these are healers. They are taught to take care of others before themselves. In fact, if you think about the, the career trajectory, the length that it takes just to become a doctor, you have to decide very early that this is the path for you, and you consistently delay your own um, self-gratification, if you will, or things for yourself before those of others, because this is your calling. In addition to that, you have these regulatory barriers. We published an article in U.S. News and World Report on the 9th of September that identified six of these. Many of them are questions that frankly, violate the Americans with Disabilities Act, but are found in things like state licensure applications for a license to practice medicine or a license to practice nursing. Those kind of barriers exist across the country. And in some cases, like in Dr. Breen's case, the myth about the barrier is actually greater than the actual barrier itself. In other words, they may be wrong about it. In Dr. Breen's case, she thought she was going to lose her medical license. And this is one of the things that she articulated to us before she took her life in April of 2020. She thought she was going to lose her medical license in New York State, and she was incorrect about that. But the myth and, the, and just the, the culture around not being able to prioritize your own health, let alone your mental health, is, is just pervasive across the healthcare industry. And it's obviously one of the main things that we're working on trying to resolve in our foundation. 
pervasive also just in society uh, at large. So one of the things that's so special about your organization is that you've actually helped to push through legislation to give support to health care workers. Tell us what specific measures are included in the law. So this law is amazing, and we are so fortunate for the bipartisan support of Senators Kane and Cassidy and Young and Reed. And I mean, it passed unanimously in the Senate in the fall, and then it passed by a strong majority in the House. This is first of its kind legislation that supports the mental health and well-being of the healthcare workforce. And it does four primary things. First of all, it invests programmatic funding for the future healthcare workforce, those healthcare professional students right now who are in training. And it helps to provide funding to help their education so they understand the issues around well being and mental health. The second is it provides programmatic funding for hospitals right now to take care of their current workforce. As we've already discussed today, that is a significant issue right now. Third, it provides the CDC a nationwide awareness campaign uh, funding so that we can share best practices associated with how we take care of this critical workforce. And then finally, it provides a study to understand the causes of the issues here so we can build a roadmap for future solutions. Corey, what else does your organization do for healthcare workers and what more is needed to help protect uh, those folks who are protecting all of us? We were founded in June of 2020, two months after Dr. Breen died, because of the overwhelming cry for help we heard from the healthcare workers. Our mission is to reduce the burnout of healthcare professionals and safeguard their well being, envisioning this world where seeking mental health is universally viewed as a sign of strength, not a sign of weakness. Um, our areas of focus are really in three primary buckets awareness, advocacy, and in advancing solutions. And recently, we launched a nationwide initiative called allinforhealthcare.org, where individuals can sign up and join us to learn those best practices and what those solutions are. Uh, we've done that by bringing together industry leaders to identify those best practices. Now, you ask a very important question about what is needed right now, and I currently sit on a work group established by the Surgeon General and we're working on five areas right now that every hospital in this country needs to um, invest in. And the, the first and foremost is just making a commitment to the well being of the workforce. The second is to train the healthcare work uh, leadership on how you do this work, because frankly, this is a new thing for healthcare. Um, we've been operating with a certain set of rules and expectations for our workforce, which have clearly changed. The third thing they need to do is everyone needs to do an assessment. They've got to understand where the workforce is really struggling and where it's not, because there are there is hope here and they're, they're not struggling everywhere. Um, next, they need to work on this this uh, this issue that has really been around for quite some time, which is electronic medical records. Those are the number one cause of burnout prior to the pandemic. So they've got to get the bureaucracy out of the way of the healthcare workers. And then finally, as we've talked about a lot today, they need to ensure there's adequate mental health resources for all the healthcare professionals. And that includes things like peer support programs all the way to formal counseling. All this has to be done now more than ever if we are to preserve our healthcare workforce. Uh, we need them and we've got to pay attention to it. You know, the last thing I would just say is that everyone in the general public should make sure that they watch this movie, The First Wave. It's a documentary on Hulu. If you want to see what has happened to the healthcare workforce, there is no better vision into that than watching The First Wave because it is truly uh, remarkable what they've been through and what they continue to sacrifice for us each and every day. Corey Feist, so important. Uh, thank you for your work and for your advocacy on behalf of all of our healthcare workers. Thank you so much. Have a great day.